For this you will need a bag of diced beef, this is just some frozen diced casserole beef, a couple of dumplings which I've got from this packet because um, I'm not going to faff about making the dumplings, a uh, swede, parsnip, an onion, oops, just trying to escape, a couple of carrots and some beef stock cubes. I'm actually going to have a couple of parsnips just in case and also some potatoes. Okay. Uh, and then what I'm going to do, first of all before I do anything else, I'm just going to get a little bit of oil. This is some rapeseed oil and I've got a griddle pan. I'm only putting a little bit on just to make sure nothing sticks and then I'm going to spread that around my pan to make sure that the beef doesn't stick. And first of all we need to brown off the beef before we actually put it in with the stew. So I'm just going to warm up my pan. Okay, so first of all we're going to take our beef cubes and we're going to start off by browning these off in a griddle pan. Work out how much I want. Okay. In fact, I'm just going to do I'll do because the packet's not very big, so I'm just going to do the whole packet. Right, while the beef is frying off in the griddle pan, I've just poured into this glass jug around about 400 mils of boiling water. And into that, I'm going to dissolve three of the beef stock cubes. So, what you do is you open the stock cube. Okay, and then just crumble it into the water. This is going to make the lovely stock for the stew. And it does add a really nice flavour to it, actually. I prefer the beef stock cubes to the vegetable ones but obviously if you're vegetarian don't include the meat and just add and um, just use vegetable stock instead um, so that's the only change you make the recipe is the same apart from that so you can have this as a vegetarian alternative if you want because obviously not everyone's going to want the meat version okay so I'm just going to crush this last one's doesn't want to crush. Okay, let's crumble it in. Okay, I'm just going to wipe my hands. Then I'm going to take a spoon and I'm just going to mix that up. Make sure all the stock cubes are well dissolved. put my large saucepan on at the back so that's my large saucepan Oop, trying to try and avoid the steam okay and into the saucepan I'm going to pour the stock I've just made you can just use two stock cubes if you want but I wanted it a bit stronger and I've got the hob on so that's going to be um, warm and keeping warm for me what I've done, I've added a bit more water to this because um, it's such a big saucepan. Um, if later on you feel it's not enough, you can always mix, mix up another batch of stock and pour it in. Okay, so that's going to keep bubbling away, simmering away. Meanwhile, my beef is busy cooking off in the griddle pan. It's all starting to turn nice and brown. One thing I like about doing it cooking it in the griddle pan as well. You see all this fluid that's come away from the meat because it was frozen. What I'm going to do is I'll pour that away um, before I put the beef into the stock mixture and it just stops 
that really watering down the flavour of the stock afterwards. Okay, so next what I need to do is prepare the vegetables. Right, my beef has finished just browning off in the pan. This is my saucepan with the stock in, and then to that I'm going to add three potatoes that I've chopped up. And then in this bowl I've got carrot, swede and parsnip. All I've done with, I've used one parsnip which is the white one, I've used two carrots and I've used about a quarter of, a, of the swede. And then I'm going to add those to the pan as well. Okay, just going to give that a bit of a mix. Like that. As you can see I've cut them fairly chunky because it's going to be a nice chunky soup. Um, cause it's, mm -hmm. Give that a bit of a stir. And as you can see I've cut the pieces quite chunky so it's going to be a lovely chunky stew. Then I'm going to add the beef that I browned off in the griddle pan if it comes out the pan. So I'm trying to do this one handed. Okay. And I'll stir that in as well. Okay. And I've got the um, ring on full now so that it's going to bring this to the boil because obviously we need to boil the vegetables and the potato. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to roughly chop a bit of onion. Don't need a lot. Okay. Now just a piece about this size. Now what I'm going to do because my daughter and myself we don't actually like to eat chunks of onion what I'm going to do is I'll just, chuck, just cut off one big piece and I'm going to put that in the pan just to add a bit of flavour because it, you'll still get the flavour from the onions um, but obviously if I'd have put the little tiny bits of onion in then um, we'd have had bits of onion in the stew and it would have spoilt it for myself and my daughter whereas just by having this one piece in it's going to add the flavour to the water and then I can either chop that up and give it in my husband's portion later or I could just throw it away it depends how much it breaks up okay then all I'm going to do now is put the lid on that and then I'm going to leave that to cook for about half an hour 45 minutes oh I forgot to mention as well you also need to add the dumplings if you've got some frozen ones like I did what you can do is microwave them for a minute just to soften them up because if they're trying to defrost and cook at the same time it's going to be a bit awkward then as you can see it's all bubbling away nicely I've actually turned that down to number four to that I'm just going to add the dumplings and then I'm going to leave that to cook for about half an hour 45 minutes okay so I've had this simmering away on my hob for half an hour and as you can see, I'll just take it off the heat so it's not so noisy. As you can see, it's reduced down a little bit, and all the potatoes, the carrots, and everything are all cooked. So that's what it looks like once it's cooked. And I'm just going to serve it into some bowls, and then I'll show you what it looks like. And once you've poured it into a bowl, it will do. It, this will feed three people. Um, and as you can see, you get plenty to eat, and it's all really nice and well cooked and soft and delicious hope you enjoyed this tutorial don't forget to thumbs up comment and subscribe mm.